Um, good morning. Uh, yesterday we discussed the general structure of, of endpoint open data attributes. Um, so we considered the so called partial sub attributes without uh, the color traces. And we found nice, uh, by just starting monotony relations on, on the string version, we found nice relations and then just write down. Uh, what we in particular as just as a byproduct and we obtain this this is um, part of the relation. I just rewrite it again because um, it can be written in a nicer form. So yesterday I go through this form which uh, actually um, is in the physics report of Carlo and uh Somati. But I did. I actually I don't like this writing um, like that because uh, we, we somehow agree that we always start with one. Huh? So uh, now since since we integrate along the the, the disk and um, pop up the side uh, real line, uh, uh, we can now just use cyclic symmetry and write it, put the one at the beginning. So we just uh, uh, um, continue from here from the end of the boundary and, and start here again. So we have one and and, two. and then actually from this relation you'll see that that we can just uh, that this just cap captures uh, one case we derived yesterday when we uh, one that the first particle was mass equal and the other ones all massless then you see that of course in the case of rock and amplitude this this uh, plus one is uh, just uh, multiplied by one but then we get a minus one here on the top is one massive and the remaining massless um, that we did find is the minus sign. But uh, we did not only get this relation, I think with this relation you you can boil down the number of different amplitudes from n minus one factorial, which is this just uh, takes care about the cyclic uh, symmetry along the boundary. Uh, this parity uh, just uh, reduces to n minus one factorial over two, and then we have seen that by applying all these monotony relations, we can actually uh, further reduce get more equate, more relations, and we can further reduce the system of equation for n minus three factorial. And this was a completely independent statement on, on, on what kind of particles and which supersymmetry and it was just using the properties of the string ball sheet. And now, so this for example could now, uh, we could now just uh, discuss the case uh, with, with n massless, massless open string states, so um, in, for example in the super string this are, then would be clones and we could uh, from this um, you know that uh, that when you have, um, have uh, deep brains um, with open strings on the on um, describing gauge degrees of freedom on the deep brain, you can get take the alpha brand of the zero limit and you get a gauge zero, you're not up to gauge zero. So when you take alpha brand to zero, um, and you consider all these particles um, which we scatter uh, to be massless gluons, then this the amplitude. Uh, when this card is in the amplitude, this is at the bottom, close to zero. So it will be, as you follow, I mean, a young mills amplitude, or super young mills amplitude, are just the mode of this index here. And then we can uh, do this limit at all our relations we have derived yesterday, and we, we, get, we, get, uh, we can uh, take over all these relations to young mills series. So we, we only have to put uh, at all our relations um, uh, young mills. As index, and then we get nice relations. So uh, this gives, for example, I have written down that you uh, for you the general relation uh, for endpoint, and this was this monotony relation. And we, when we uh, move move the, the two along the boundary, so we we do a analytic continuation in two, and so on. Uh, two is exchanged with three, it goes here, and then we always uh, pick up this monotony factor. However, now from this monotony relation, I take the real part. So rem remember, we, we always, when we yesterday arrived for strings, we had something like e pi 
I'm not prime, so we exchange two and three, so we get a homology of this uh, S2C, or I think I want to this external momenta. Now we, we take the field theory limit, and um, so we take the alpha prime goes to zero limit, then this is, of course, uh, uh, one. Um, well, we take a tail expansion first of course, so this is a uh, higher order than alpha prime, and, and we get one i here. And now we can take the real part, that means replacing all exponential by one. <coughs> so that is how we get these relations. Um, and we this find, find the relations where two has been moved at the end of the boundary. So this is one relation, and, and this relation is, is called class Kolff relation field theory. This is our famous relation, which we um, derived um, in field theory by Kleist Kolffer. And um, they are now going uh, to reduce this set from, from this amount um, to, to n minus 2 factorial. <coughs> you can write everything in terms of n minus 2 factorial in sub amplitudes. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. uh, which field theory do we get exactly? Uh, so by all means. But uh, what determines, what is it that determines the gauge group, for example, from the string? And that doesn't matter because uh, the, this is a the color strip amplitude, so we, we have uh, factorized, I and mean, we have open superstring theory, and anything what you can get from open superstring theory, like you could, for example, consider a, um, a, a type 1 or any four dimension, which is compactified on, 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 on color layout. And then you get, because of the you know, identified projection, you get a much smaller subgroup than S32, which where you start with. But in, in the and then, uh, then, what I said yesterday, so we, we do this computation in the, with a free, free, uh, with a free field theory, I mean, a, a conformal field theory, where we have a free, free field description. So, but uh, the vertex operators are just space time fields, so this assumption holds, and so I can do all my. My amplitude computation in four dimensions and get to all this relation. Because the only thing what I have to now is that uh, the full amplitude is the full super, super string amplitude is and the script A and um, all this has, has this good trace in front of it. With that, and that is, that is the only uh, place where the details of the gauge group enter. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So far, so bad. Okay. Just, which is which is factor, factor from the other. For which this relation holds. Okay, thank you. In practice, your amplitude should be independent whether you are super symmetric or not, because you are uh, at the level. Yes, this is, uh, this is true that uh, it is uh, independent on super symmetric. But I stressed it as a normal yesterday, one, this one. So now um, you can. Actually, write down a generic solution for this so, so you can express um, any lens amplitude as a given uh, color ordering. Let's write it like that. In terms of this n minus 2 uh, factorial basis, I will just explain in a moment what this notation means. The amplitude system notation should uh, uh, be So um, this means that here we have uh, uh, we have indices. I mean, up to n uh, a set of indices alpha, and here we have another set of indices the only. Uh, I mean, the only important point is that we have here the couple of n on twin. So these are two sets, alpha and beta. And now we, uh, we take, uh, I mean, we, we, we combine these two sets, uh, but we take the order products. 
the ordered, uh, the ordered sets of this, which means that I do not want to, to change, if I have a given ordering here for the alphas, I do not want to change it. So I can interchange uh, alphas um, with, with betas in this set, but I do not want to change the order. So this is kind of like, uh, um, um, yeah, and, and this T means that I, I just, I want to have written down my beta here, I, I transfer the order of the beta set. So I, I rewrite it. So this is uh, order product, and um, you might also call, call it shuffle product too. Explain once again, what is the T? Uh, it, it reverses, so you have a set, uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and given here, then you combine it here with the alpha set, um, but here you reverse it, so it will be the T means uh, that you take beta 3, beta 2, beta 1, and uh, as I said, this guys might be, uh, might be put inside this alpha set, but you should not um, change the total order, so which then of course by the T, the only thing what happens is that you have and of course here uh, in the generic sense, and in the generic case, uh, you indeed see that these are n minus two factorial elements. Of course, you will not need all of them for a given for a given amplitude representation. Um, but of course, uh, given how how the alpha and beta set is, at some point you will need all all these n minus two factorial combinations. And and the the n beta here is. It's just the, the number of, of elements of the Peter set. So let's call it like that. And now, um, now we have still um, some more uh, relations to, to consider, uh, which, which we uh, get by, so we, here we take the left part of the relations from this. Uh, of this um, string or the relation, so we take this piece here. But now we can also take a uh, imaginary, so called imaginary part relation, because then everything scales with alpha prime. Huh? Of course, the first, we call our relations in, in strings here will look like 1, 2, up to n plus this exponential. So we expand, take the second order of this exponential, which gives this complex i. Then, of course, when we take the, the exponential, the imaginary part, the first term drops out. Uh, but then everything scales, uh, the rest scales with alpha prime and i. So we can take the real part, the imaginary part, and we can uh, just alpha prime, uh, just, just cancel. So we can indeed also then take this limit, which then only takes place at the, at the, at the amplitude. So we then, by then we get, get the so-called imaginary part relations, which gives something really new in field theory as well in field theory. So this, what, what, what is written here, um, described as a flies coiffe relation, this was, was, was always a long time, uh, so it was, was um, well known that you can boil down this set of arbitrary strain minus two factorials, it was was known um, for a long time, but only two, uh, 2009, uh, by a string relation, uh, one of found that this can, uh, but can be further reduced to n minus 3 factorial by the so called imaginary part of the relation. So I just uh, take this imaginary part of the negative relation of the following sort. Um, so I only write the last thing, which are of course, it's a lot of So, this is from, the, from this term here. And uh, recall here we had a phase in the string relations with which. Which, uh, which described, um, um, I mean, which had all previous phases because we, we go uh, successively into, into the last sheet. Uh, so we had this, have this K2, K3, and K2, K4, and but up to K2, Kn for, for exchanging two from here to here. So this gives uh, another set of relations, which uh, are the so called um, imaginary part relation. 
<coughs> so by now, this relation really helps us the, 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 the word real part uh, relations um, or transport <coughs> relations now. Um, and this relation now has uh, <coughs> relations because they, uh, um, this relation uh, prove or derive uh, this BCJ relation, which was stated by Bernd Karasko in 2008, as conjectures. May I ask you a question? In this uh, derivation, you keep just alpha prime, order alpha prime in the exponential. Uh, and of and course, I have uh, from the, at the beginning. But if you want to keep from the string relations, uh, uh, I mean terms which are order alpha prime, you should also have alpha prime uh, in the expansion of the string amplitude. Yeah, but that's not. A, um, yeah, that's a good question. But so uh, why you keep the alpha prime in the momenta and not in the? Uh, because the, the string amplitudes don't have a linear uh, linear so term in alpha prime. So that of course have a. So, in this respect, uh, I think uh, I, I, one has to be a little bit careful when one does non supersymmetric things because then you have f to the 3 as well, and I think you should have a linear or an upper one. So, let's just say that this is only true for, for super young Be so on the same side. But uh, for, for super young let's just split now linear alpha prime term, and then everything is, is fine. I think the, the um, this non supersymmetric case and the simulation had been discussed uh, afterwards by in a paper by Len Dixon and Johannes Brady. I think they did something for that. I, I didn't look at this paper. So now um, this look this all is set, now you can express uh, your general amplitudes in terms of a set set of um, of n minus two, of uh, n minus three, sorry, sub amplitudes, a basis of sub amplitudes, and this is the state of R. So this is what what field theories have now learned, also from from string theory, that uh, this is the minimal basis of sub amplitudes, which uh, of course in the four point case is one amplitude, amplitude, which we have seen yesterday already. And this is independent whether we have mass masses or massive guys. So they can now take, for example, this set. So I actually I want uh, <coughs> just to familiarize you with this is notation, I and mean, we could just now write down it, what it means for any for four 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 point amplitude. So then we have. For example, you can take uh, 1, 2, 4, 3, which means in that case, alpha, the alpha set is just one, one element and the beta set is, is one element 3, so this beta, then we get, so then this number is, my, is 1, no? so we get a minus sign, so we have 1, um, and then we take here, so we just put this two set together, so we have 1, 2, 3, Four, of course, there is no, um, I mean, it's reversed, it doesn't do anything on this one element set. So the next set is one, three, two, four. Of course, we are allowed to exchange this two, this, uh, in this set, alpha and beta, I mean, we only need to keep the order of alpha and beta, which is true in that case. And this, uh, when you look in your notes from yesterday, this is indeed a true relation we have found yesterday. Are there any questions so far?
So now uh, we will see uh, some beautiful, um, some beautiful um, relation between actually this Jan Mills amplitude on one hand side and the virtue string integrals, uh, which I mean this is uh, string integral as a propagation factor. We I have the obvious question that I'm sure everybody asks. Mm -hmm. So now the state of R is this n basis of n minus three uh, factorial uh, mm -hmm. sub amplitudes yeah. that you prove by string theory. Yeah. So is there any intrinsic argument to the field theory to justify this reduction? Um, After the movie dying side, I mean. I mean there were um, so there was this there was this um, there was this um, work on from this, to show from string amplitudes that you um, can reduce it to this number. Um, Two thousand nine. I mean, um, was actually my paper, and um, and then uh, there were many um, afterwards. There were many papers by uh, from China and um, who from Chinese people who uh, tr um, tried to to write this number. Mm -hmm. By in, in four dimensional field theory, so they really went, went to, um, to the spin helicity formalism. And I think they are published. So, this number now is also proven from, I, I guess, independent field theory after, after this. Book. This is not in four dimensions, This is in uh, this is in generic dimensions. So, so yeah, this is this is so the only thing what you need to, uh, what you need is a, a super young mess. Theory that means you don't, uh, you don't want this linear term. Mm -hmm. That's probably all I follow, but, but this is completely independent of the dimension. So this proof is much more general than, than what uh, has been done afterwards mm -hmm. in, 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 in four dimensional um, spinner density method. So, uh, I, mean, of, I mean, of course, for field theorists, there are obvious reasons to, 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 um, to stay in four dimensions. So the, and, and, and there you can also apply all this technology with um, spin density method. And then, but then this in four dimension special case, say, I think there are proofs by now which just use field theory. But the general, the generic proof uh, comes from string theory, which, which holds for any any proofs and for any, any, I don't know, any, any compactification, even Kalabiao compactification in any dimensions. Does this answer your question? So uh, then let me come to my uh, third uh, lecture. Uh, we want to discuss the general structure of open string amplitudes. Um, I will also uh, then we will also be able to derive the first principle, uh, the, the endpoint open superstring amplitude without any uh, doing any computations. So we have seen uh, yesterday that um, our um, that, that any open string computation always uh, will imply some some uh, some uh, so-called string form factor, some some integral disk integral which which can be uh, classified or which can be written down by by one formula, uh, which is. Uh, which we call, can also call the generalized uh, beta function. We have seen that in the Fachmium case, which we have extensively computed yesterday, uh, so the for Fachmium amplitude, this gives us uh, Euler beta functions, I mean, this is ratio of gamma functions, and, and I mean, you, you can now just call the gener gen generic case with, with an arbitrary number of external um, strings that um, we just call generalized beta function. And so let me just recall um, how, or uh, with what kind of integral we, we should be concerned in the following. So we had, uh, let's call it, we know that in the following way we had, 
with have to deal with the following integral. So uh, now <coughs> um, for I mean for it proves to be convenient to, to keep this conformal filling group uh, volume. Um, and we have learned in the first lecture how to deal with that. I mean, we have fixing three vertex operating positions and, and, and doing a C dose. But um, there are some reasons which we will see in the following uh, to keep it at a moment. And that was also one of the things I, I, I really um, stressed um, on in the first lecture on uh, stressed how to, how to work this out. Uh, so we had the differences of uh, vertex operator position ci minus cj, and then we had this um, kinematic invariance describing the external momentum k a as cj. And then we have some um, non-integer part. And this, this is the um, factor was called the, the Kubernetes factor, or it's called the Kubernetes factor. And uh, so, and the, the NIJ are integers, and um, I will just, you know, I want to have some bubble counting on these integers. And uh, we can, uh, depending on I mean, just to get this um, different amplitudes, I mean, with different um, color ordering, we have some integration region here and determine uh, by how our vertex operators are aligned along the boundary of the disk. So, strictly speaking, this is the co-optified the alignment. So, it's, um, so it's off the boundary. And actually, uh, these integers are not completely arbitrary. This comes so recall this is how when you perform your amplitude computations, you, you have to to apply all these big uh, contractions um, and get products of two point functions and then. And you will get always a Kubernetes factor from contracting the, the plane wave exponentials, and then you get some, some um, typically, typically some uh, negative integer powers of, of coming from Green's functions, like coming from Green's functions. But uh, in, a, in a consistent conformal field theory, these integers um, cannot be completely arbitrary. I mean, this is simply when you do the computation, you can verify that this is indeed the case. Um, but it has to be, by general principles, it has to be, um, they always have to sum, sum up to minus two. I mean, this is simply the fact uh, when yesterday there was a question uh, when we do this monotone relations, um, what happens uh, when we, when we uh, move the counter to infinite, uh, then um, correlation functions in conformal field theory have always to behave uh, at infinite uh, with ci to the minus two, uh, with, where to, uh, h is the conformal value of the uh, of the i uh, vertex operator. So this is for ci goes to minus uh, to plus infinite. So in order to make this sure, uh, these integers have to go to this condition to get this two here, because we we have uh, our vertex operators. Need to, need to have conformal weight one. So this is uh, CFT for the letters. Uh, have to behave as um, this is behavior for, for C1, where any of the C's goes to, to zero. Yeah, to even so. And uh, now there are just some, some mathematics uh, relations uh, because it is, these objects are um, interesting interest by their own uh, from the mathematical point of view. I mean, when you do, really do this integral, I mean, the four point, uh, the four point case uh, was kind of boring. It's also well known in the 60s, the so called Vinizano, and we have this euler beta function, but in generic cases, 
you get uh, the so called iterated integrals. Iterated integrals are integrals which have decided such kind of iteration along, along a real line. Huh? Um, So the simplest iteration is uh, which is uh, which is just the Let me write it right in the final. Um I think this um which is easy to I think. And uh, here you have you have clear um, iterations of y is always smaller than x. Now these are iterated integrals uh, which uh, actually, yeah. <coughs> also called generalized order integrals. And uh, they integrate what functions to the integrate. We have seen what in this trivial case that you get just the ratio of, of, of gamma functions, but in the generic case, they integrate the so called multiple Gaussian hypergenic functions. Does every, anybody everybody know what what a what a um, hypergenic function is? A single hmm? single hypergenic function. Maybe. Yeah, the 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 single exactly. Yeah, the single Gaussian hypergenic function is is uh, probably what everybody has has already met. Um, so the single Gaussian hypergeometric function are the so-called PPFQ. Um, they have uh, they have indi indices uh, P indices uh, upper indices P and, and Q lower indices, and then they depend on one variable and they can be uh, written as a power series. It's hard to follow the exponential equation. Um, the power series is found in this I mean, a product of all these guys. And then you have x to the n. This is a uh, Gaussian hydrogen with functions out of index multiple. Uh, Boham is. Uh, And multiple Gaussian hypergeometric functions are a generalization of this with several of these indices, so multiple of these variables. So you have not only an x, but you have like y and so on. And then you don't use any more this P of Q notation. And uh, mathematically, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anything about this Gaussian hypergeometric functions. And uh, then this actually you can, when you really parameterize this iterations, then actually you will get, you can always parameterize this integrations um, in terms of this um, zero to one in integrations. So you can, like here, I mean, you might have started with, with um, I mean, this one smaller than two, and then you describe this parameterize in terms of this. So you always get. It, you can always write it in terms of integral from zero to one, and and then you see actually that this um, are simply Mellin transformation. So, um, so, so these are the most general Mellin arbitraries, which which uh, then I mean I, I told you in the first lecture. That uh, these Mellin amplitudes <coughs> see are very interesting, also which are able to um, relate us. So this is was now just to set up the stage. So now we will, uh, for the rest of of this um, one session, we will be mainly concerned with this function and the properties of it. And we will to tell you the already in advance what we will find. We will find actually that. that Although this function for a given ordering here, so for one given ordering, 
have the same features as, as this uh, young Mills amplitudes we have seen before. The young Mills amplitudes, this was uh, the features came from different color orderings in here. The features come from just uh, considering different different uh, integers here. So there's a, there's a completely strange uh, duality between these amplitudes here for hidden color ordering and this um, young Mills sub amplitudes, which will then lead us actually to to um, to make even more relations between these two objects and um, then by generic principles we can simply write down what the uh, endpoints of the superstream amplitude is. <coughs> so what <coughs> here of course we now we have um, I mean <coughs> We have this relation, uh, I mean, the <coughs> thousands of different um, integrals possible, I mean, depending how we choose these integers. And in one case, actually, when you, when you compute, for example, the, I mean, six open, open, six open spin amplitude, I mean, so this n is six, so then you have something like uh, 1400 of different integrals to deal with. And so now, how can we? Uh, this is actually I did with with my uh, student uh, this a long time ago. We just from from scratch computed uh, that six point amplitudes, and then we have to deal with this bottom hundred of different integrals. And then of course the natural connections can be can be. Is there some basis of integrals uh, to which we can uh, can always um, reduce it? And this um, will be now now in the next step. Or integral reduction. So I mean the first. Uh, so imagine that you have here some typical setup of, of, of integers. So uh, there's of course then you can relate different different integrals by partial so called partial uh, fraction. Fractioning it inside the integral, so what does it mean? Uh, you might have some some integers, uh, I mean some integer powers, negative powers, like CI I mean really call it integers is just the uh, I mean and then it for example, my hypsis. And then you can do partial fraction here and, and, and combine these two terms to one term, CIJ. CIJ. Okay? I mean, this you simply have to write everything in terms of seven and find it. So we get, we get lots of linear relations. With integer coefficients. And now, um, of course, you can have uh, another set of relation uh, which we uh, can derive, uh, and namely we can do partial integration inside the integrand. Down um, the generic formula, and then uh, we will see later for an example how it works out. So we can now, um, for example, when we have such a fixing of, um, <coughs> we, call, we can get rid of this by fixing three values for later positions. Um, then we can do the following, I mean, or the following. Um, Identity is true, so we have this integral over 
Oh, was it a mic or a painting? Um, oh, was it a painting? Um, and my recipe uh, form for the remaining unfixed positions. And because this fixing has to respect the ordering under consideration. And then, so we take a, a total value of which is for example k, which is one of the unfixed, of course. So k is, k is not uh, one, is not an element of one and minus one or n. And then uh, we put it on the speed. Is not? Hmm? K is an element or is not? It's not. Then, uh, and then we have uh, here Recall from the uh, example of yesterday We have already seen that what happens when we put one of six uh, positions at infinite uh, Then, okay, so what happens, I mean, uh, then um, uh, You might, I mean uh, you have asked a question whether this has a problem if one is at infinite, but then there could always apply this momentum conservation such that, that the infinite uh, factors, uh, uh, could, I mean, the power of the, of the infinite factor was always uh, adding up to zero, so it can be dropped out. And this is, of course, also a complement that you have to see in the view of the markers. Because I mean, you see that if I take, um, if I put one at infinite, then uh, we have learned that this is traded. We need to introduce C ghost correlator, which which give um, uh, which give uh, then a power of, of infinite to square them. And this result cancels um, the, the minus two, which which we have for for, for, for this um, point, which is set to infinite. So this clearly drops out, and uh, so how does it uh, continue? Of course, I don't have these guys here. These integer guys, and this is zero. So now we can uh, this is a, uh, we can do partial <coughs> integration. So uh, we can uh, we get the minus sign, and we get and now provide this integral method. Okay. And uh, so this is the reason why I, I write here only n minus one because I know that the infinite uh, term <coughs> is changing uh, safely and can, can, safely, can safely be dropped out. And then I mean I have to this partial integration, I mean then uh acts on all this term um, on all these terms, so I get I get this uh real numbers, I mean this um SIJ so down and This is now um, another relation, and, and of course, it's clearly a, I mean, um, a non integer relation. <coughs> so this is, um, this uh, external uh, momenta is collaborative momenta. Uh, so it's a, it's a linear relation. Um, what is real coefficients or uh, rational? Um. 
for example, you can look at, at a special specific case um, when all these integers here are zero, then you get a especially nice relation. So um, let me just uh, write down it. I'm stressing this now because um, um, later on we will uh, meet, meet precisely this combination again uh, uh, when we consider the high energy limit. Uh, so this this combination is, is now as a scatter demonstration. So this this combination here there's of course a deep relation between the scatter demonstration and, and this partial liberation relations. So this are I mean, just a common at this point. Now this better than equation. So I told you at the beginning of my lecture that uh, lectures um on Monday that um this better than equation has a deep interrelation between this virtual integralized on one hand and high energy limit of Question amplitudes and describing a mid zero equivalent of the short set <coughs> You will see that the here to the end of when this point is past high energy limit. So, uh, um, <coughs> so this part one has um, integrations and uh, partial fraction and, and two partial integrations in that integral. Uh, I mean, I think you are convinced that this uh, uh, clearly allow uh, to highly reduce the number of, of um, amplitudes because you get lots of system of, system of equations um, between uh, different amplitudes, so they allow to highly reduce the set of integrals and indeed I mean you can see that uh, uh, you can express all of this integral in terms of the basis um, of n minus three factorial so there's this number again appearing, which is at this point a completely different uh, comes from completely different um, from the, completely different objects because recall that here now uh, we, we, we consider this relation we are considering this relation for a given fixed ordering. So given fixed ordering, we, we do some things, some manipulation inside the integral, and uh, this gives us this uh, partial. Integration relation is part of fraction relation for any for any given fixed uh, order and here uh, we get the basis of this object. While this other basis of the Mills amplitude sub amplitudes or string sub amplitudes refer to this different ordering. So there we really get something here. So this will be now uh, um, there will be a nice interplay of, of this two number of this two completely independent basis elements. <coughs> so, um, are there questions? So there is a full proof that uh, the reduction to n minus three factorial is the maximum reduction. Or this is what people achieve, but in principle there could be a smaller set. Um, it has been first observed up to 
um, in this um, up, in, up to seven point amplitude that you know, that um, a certain size is like for example like, um, twenty four dimensional um, basis. And uh, then now uh, by now um, um, this integral is described uh, some period integral on 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 some human and yeah, there are general proof that uh, you can write any kind of just because the period, um, the period um, integrals are just this dimension. So there's a, I mean, I will on Friday, I will, I will put this more in mathematical context and then I will come, come to it again. So there's, uh, there's a mathematical proof for this by, by Mani and um, um, now actually from by Mani at all, um, Volker of Mani, they have only proven it. Um, this n one is too tutorial um, by using this integral and this part of vector relations. Um, but then, um, I mean, talking, I mean, talking to Volker of and using the mathematician together. He says that one can do it also to, to boil it down to n minus two factorial. So there's not a written up to um, by mathematicians for n minus two factorial, but but by um, for mathematicians it's, it's kind of obvious that this has to be n minus two factorial because for them it's just a period matrix on the space and I mean, there's also for me now, there's more and more, and more, uh, the more I read this mathematics literature, it becomes more and more obvious for me that this number is, is kind of, um, there's no further reduction possible. And as I said in, in practice, I mean, you don't see that, for example, in uh, you consider six point amplitude, you don't see any possibility to further reduce this particular. Um, I mean, like, I mean, it was when I did this a long time ago with my uh, one of my first students. I mean, um, the six computing this six point amplitude, we had really, um, and we had about um, 5,000 equations, and we solved them, and it was really non trivial to that. Um, Whatever you did, I mean, it was always you always got a six uh, part, I mean, a six dimensional um, solution to the end. But it was the first um, indication that this is um, kind of um, n minus two factorial. Um, no, you don't want to be happy yet, or? No, no, I'm happy. You're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, I think this is how how anyone how physics is proved since, right? It's an uh, experimental proof. Right? So in your case, if you have the full system and a full system, you have the full system of 5,000 equations, mm -hmm. including the computer rank, and uh, I mean, it's not just an observation. It's, uh, but how it's a complete rank, no? Is that right? No? Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, but how do you compute the rank? I don't know, no. Yeah. It's just in principle. Yeah, yeah, but the, uh, the problem is that the system is highly. Highly over over determined, so that means uh, out of this uh, five thousand equations for the six point case, uh, um, um, on, only um, maybe two hundred are right wrong, and you don't have to, 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 to sort them out. And, uh, and that is actually to do it with mathematical mean, somehow. Still now with with this desktop computer that you have now, it's, it's basically not possible to solve it because you have. I mean, the linear um, with integer coefficient is no problem, but you have these real coefficients, which when you so start solving this, this no equation is, becomes a pain. Uh, so let me now um, come to um, to um, the point what we are seeing from this lesson. Um, of section two, so we um, see that actually this whole um, virtual integral is uh, behave precisely like young Mills amplitudes. Uh, so let me discuss a few things after. 
auf deutsche Immigrants, auf das deutsche Immigrants. So we have seen that um, we, we have a basis of n minus three factorial uh, of this virgin integrals. Um, so for a given color ordering, it's enough to consider or I mean, concentrate on 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 a basis of for a given color ordering of virtual integrals, and then we uh, take a particular. And for example, you can just take um, the spaces. So this is now our definition. So for a particular color ordering, then we take this object. And now we might already um, be um, realizing why I'm writing it in this form. I mean, I write it precisely like that. We have written young Mills, our, our object with color ordering in the previous way because. This will be a one to one on that later on. Um, <laughs> so uh, now you understand also what the notation means. So this notation here um, says simply how uh, what what C, C's we take as a denominator. So we have uh, uh, 1, 2, 2, 3, and then n minus 1, n. And then from n we close it to 1. So this is the notation. And this will be, um, this, uh, um, at this point, um, we're writing, of course, um, n, n factorial object still. Uh, so we have um, n for given pi. Uh, uh, we have n is our integrals. And as we have learned before, there are many relations, plus are relations, or many relations between these integrals uh, subject to this uh, partial fraction, partial integrations that we have discussed before. I can just write you down uh, one relation. Namely, uh, so the set of partial, partial fractions can be written um, in the following way. Look very familiar to you now because it's exactly the, the relation we have found before for young men's arm. It's also quite nice, quite relations. So, this, this is um, they look exactly like the classic relations. But the meaning of the notation is different. Hmm? But the meaning of the notation is the different. meaning of the notation is probably different, but the structure is the same, and you can make but you can make more. More, um, you can more, make more connections. And uh, so, uh, when you write your, your amplitudes, if you have amplitudes in crystal space, then you have 
uh, integrations over over crystal variables, and then uh, you can um, directly map to the variables to, to the virtual variable. So then that is uh, the space where you can make really direct connections. And then uh, we can discuss uh, part of part integrations, part of integration of relations again. Uh, so, um, so we get this um, real, real numbers here. Um, and then so, and, and by comparing with what we have seen before, uh, and this is direct correlation, and this is just nothing else on the PCJ relations for this C's. And of course, here again, you see that I can choose a basis of n minus 2 factorial. So, this is a basis of n minus 2 factorial, just in the same way as I can choose a young man's basis of n minus 2 factorial. And uh, then, in addition with this, I can, I can, um, I can boil down um, things to n minus three factorial. So from this, I, I learn that I can choose a basis for example. Sigma is now indeed uh, only a minus three factorial um, element. I mean, one of this. <coughs> so we can just make. Uh, let's just look at an example how how this um, looks and practice. So what is the meaning? The step. Yeah. Uh, the virtual integral. Yes, but for some specific uh, choice of the n i. For some specific choice of what? N i j. Yes. For some specific choice of n i j. So, for example, so, uh, that means a basis of for any other. But I am. Um, um, so, the, I mean. There are basis elements, so any other of this integral can all they always be written. They always be written in terms of this basis. And uh, uh, that means uh, any open superstring amplitude can always be written in terms of this uh, n minus 3 factorial object. <laughs> and we will see an example um, after this break um, uh, how, how this uh, looks like. So, this is the main message that. Um, that uh, in the same way as we can express um, any of the uh, young mill sub amplitudes in terms of a basis of n minus 3 factorial, in the same way we can express any of these integrals in terms of a basis of, of these guys. So, um, so um, we can just make um, an example um, how this. Looks like in four dimensions, for four-point spacer. There, for example, the uh, following nodes: so one, two, three, four, yes. and you can prove uh, that uh, it indeed holds. Uh, because uh, so what do this, this integrals mean? So it's, we have the <coughs> integral, um, I mean, according to this um, color ordering, or this ordering of, of vertex operators. And then we have um, this Copernican factor. And now I put every all these objects in one bracket. So this we have learned. As in the denominator C12, C23, uh, C34, C41. And of course, we always have this component healing factor in front of it. 
this guy has C1, 2, C2, 4, C4, 3, and C3, 1. And this guy has C1, 3, C3, 2, C2, 4, C4, 1. And uh, now you can take any fixing, like, I mean, it's most convenient now to fix C4 as an infinite. So that means all, all this guys with 4 will, will drop out. Uh, and then this is an identity sub subject to part of fraction. So indeed, this is zero. So this is how it works. In fact, uh, this is a, a similar relation I have written down this morning. For young men's object, it's just a flash this by a young men's, and it's the same, you get the relation which is a, which is a so called class correct relation. Now, um, though this was example to take the partial, partial fraction part, an, an example to partial integration for this four point case, so we um, can, for example, do this. That we see a uh, derivative from the Muscovian factor. So this is zero because we have this partial fraction inside. And now we can drop it out. Uh, and, and then it looks <coughs> like. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, nothing happens with C12 because it doesn't depend on, 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 on C3, but then we get um, here S13. So we successively uh, uh, get uh, and have, have to apply the leader derivative with respect to C3. On this guy, we get um, this. So this is a relation, and now you can again uh, combine these two guys and. Uh, so this is again has been written down for, for this fixing. Um, so I, I should I should remove this factor because it has been already included. But now to, to write it again in terms of this notation, I can I just have to um, I have to to, to I have to uh, complete. The, so you see there are only two there are only two um, polynomials. I mean. In, in differences. So, but I need I need four in, in total to get to write something like that here. But you see, there are always two of the four um, drop out because um, you always have two. I mean, there's one is, has been fixed to infinite, so you do, to do this conformal killing uh, factor I and mean, has always two drop out. Uh, so, like here, so I only have now to complete to complete here. Uh, with two, poly, with two factors uh, containing four, such that I can write such, such a stupid uh, polynomial. And if I do this, um, I get the following relation. Uh, is this uh, clear what I'm doing here, or is it uh, other? Uh, or do you want to ask some questions like this? So now, actually, you might wonder why, why I get um, two terms here. No, why you get the five? Yeah. Hmm? Why you get the five rather than the answer? Why I get up? Um, 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. This is a five point example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a five. This is a five point example. It doesn't matter. I mean, so about five point elastic um, This is a relations. So, I mean, you see, for example, that, um, okay, maybe we can make a break here and then I. Um, So, indeed, uh, so the four point what we did here this is a uh, fast fraction, and then uh, you have this four polynomials, and uh, this is indeed a relation because I mean, it's subject to partial fractioning. And in the five point case, uh, we start, I mean, we just consider this, this integrand here and uh, do this uh, differentiation, then it's clearly, this is clearly zero. And uh, so then the partial integration, and then we get this. And then we, we, we have to put all um, terms back to, to this representation, so in, in, in pressing in terms of Caesar. So the simple ter simple term is this um, brown. So we have this, this will give this a zero four part, and then we have to combine it such that we get um, we get a virtual integral uh, um, back. So we have one, two. One, two, and two, five is um, um, it drops out because we have uh, five is actually infinite, five, three as well, and then we have three, four, which is this guy, and then uh, when we have four, one, then it's also, uh, we can also think about that four, one is inside here because uh, we can just uh, perform this relation or we can do this definitely with this, with the fixing is one is at zero and two, four is at one. So then C4, one is, is just one. So we, we did get this term here, and uh, what we did here is uh, for the C1, uh, 2 C3, 1, uh, we did in the first this partial fraction relation, so we get two terms, then we combine, um, then we com so then we take the blue one, this one, times, I mean, here we get the partial fraction times this guy, so it gives this guy, uh, because then we have 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, and then the five down matter, and then we have four one. So you see, it, uh, the, 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 due to this fixing here, uh, in order to have, um, in order to have uh, now uh, five five uh, C's in the denominator, we always put the four at the end, uh, such that the difference between four and one is, is always one. So we have this kind of data, and uh, then we have also this. Second term of the partial fraction combines with this term, it's the same term, C1, 2, C3, 2. So that is why we get here the sum of 2, 3 plus um, 1, 3. And then from this green term, we have 1, 2, 2, 3. And then the 5 is doesn't matter, and the 4, 1 is like, so we get exactly this relation. And this relation is, uh, if you now again replace this guy with the young Wilson, are there uh, questions for this? So as I have uh, said um, already, we can with this manipulation we can choose a basis of virtual integrals for given color ordering, and uh, we like to choose this basis. Now you see, actually, due to this exercise we just made it before, you see why we, we want to choose this basis. Because then we, there's a, there's a fixing like uh, C1 at 0, and then C2, we add like 1 at 1, and C and at infinity. We, we can always make sure that actually 
the three CI chains in the field of the nature drop out because you always get n, you always have to see that minus one, minus one, and from here, uh, which is just one one. So one one is one. So this is why we like to fill the spaces so we have a, and like you see, it's not total basis. And uh, on the other hand, we have already seen that polynomials, amplitudes, we have two little stages. <coughs> Note that, I mean, uh, let me repeat this is for fixed, for a fixed color order, we, for a fixed order, no vertex operators fixed. Yeah, so this is. Uh, is always fixed here. Um, and it uh, just is a rotation on, on how to arrange the vertex positions along certain along the uh, sorry how to how to distribute this this C sphere and not to always keep the vertex positions fixed. And uh, we have seen that uh, that uh, this guy this set of amplitude which is also n minus three factorial um, Obeys the same, exactly the same relation, like this, this uh, part, um, this, uh, this is a relation and this last point relation. So we have com completely two completely different sets of objects which fulfill the same, um, the same um, set of equations. So this we have two, two minimal building blocks. Here. And my three factorial. So this this object here, and this object here. And now you, you can guess what uh, I mean. I mean now we can start playing with this minimal building blocks, so, and we can now you might now even guess what. What's a superstring amplitude? Um, I mean, the scattering of n open strings. Um, what what it is? So we can compute it, or uh, what well, we can just guess the result. I mean, the computation is, is very tedious. Um, actually, it covers Mata and and Mata. We did this um, in, in, in two papers, and um, most of them quite from Bertha. Um, but the final result was quite striking. Um, I think that we, we can understand this result now by just what we have learned in the lectures. Um, so um, now we, we can write down what the end rule of the super string amplitude is without doing any computation. So recall what, what, what we want to, to compute now in superstring theory. Uh, we want to compute uh, the scattering of n open strings. I mean, uh, in each of the strings has, has some uh, some buffer factors or charges at the end um, uh, of the boundary of at the boundary of, of, the, of, the, of the string ends. So we, we have uh, um, we are computing. Uh, this object here. And now I, I put the right to some button structures, but uh, we will be only be concerned with this is sub amplitude here. So we have, of course, um, maybe in, 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 uh, in Grasse's lecture, you, um, and you know what the, what the gluon vertex operator is, and the gluon vertex operator. Describes the emission of, of of a gluon. So um, a gluon has a polarization, a transversal polarization. So it must be somewhere in the vertex operator. And of course, all these strong button factors. So this is a this is a form of the gluon vertex operator. And it doesn't matter now really how it looks like. Uh, the point I want to make is that it depends on the polarization and on, on the momentum. So at the end, of course, the whole amplitude. Uh, 
and will depend on n of this, this guy, so we will be all this collaborative product. So this is what decided what I denoted yesterday. This is the matrix that we will have when we work out this amplitude, we will have lots of terms uh, with scalar products times this virtual device. And this is thousands of terms, as I said, for the, if you, when you do it by hand, for the six point case, you will end up with something like 1400 terms. Uh, each has a certain kinematics and, and some certain uh, virtual integral. Then you have to apply, reduce the virtual integrals to the spaces, and then you also should do some manipulation with this, um, with this kinematic factor, or you should try to get something which which is a minimal building block. So, so this is this are young mills amplitude. So maybe you want to um, but this is now how they, how they look like. And these are the young mills amplitude. So um, it's the simplest so how do they look like? I mean the simplest is I mean this you have to put this in this pool I mean so for some this amplitude, how does it look like? I mean this is you have to convert it and maybe this is a final final rule. So this is kind of all in one, two, three, four. So you that's kind of easy to use. You have to convert this final diagram as one, two, three, four. And then you have um, to also have a loop, a loop going. And you have to um, this is the last term. You have to um, add one to the other. Okay, and then uh, there are, of course, other conductors that actually transform and then you have the final rules and for the normal field case, then you have um, not only the C vertex here, but you also have this for the commutation, which is conductor. So when you compute this in final, uh, you know, the final rule, uh, then I mean, this term, for example, is at one over the proper data, and then you take the simple vertex. So you're going to guess the, the superstring amplitude starting from the young mills, so the big theory we need. I mean, I know that the superstring amplitude has to look with this young mills and the big theory. Okay, so this is the reason why it has to be superstring because you don't want the linear term of the prime. Yes, 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 yes. And, and now we talk about superstring. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and now, I mean, I just want to, do, uh, to tell you now how this um, young mills amplitude looks like, so that will involve terms like this, so, so polarization and, and momenta. On and I mean, <coughs> now this, so, so uh, clearly, this this objects contain all the kinematics and all the uh, polarizations and, and momenta. While, while the, our string integrals I mean, just contain the string effects. So, um, let us furthermore, we have we have learned yesterday that this guy here, this is a full string amplitude, or let, let me make it with the color string amplitude. This guy we have. Due to our monotrivial relationship with string theory, we have n minus three factorial given a basis, all the basis of n minus three factorial of them. So we can we can uh, we can put them in a vector. So let's consider a vector of um, which I denote like z now. Um, so this is a vector of n minus n minus three dimensional vector of superstring amplitudes, and each is is Specified by, by the ordering, so a sigma is, is a super string amplitude 1, 2, uh, 2 sigma, 2 n minus 2 sigma, n minus 1, and so I have n minus 3 for, for, for the um, for permutation, so sigma is an element of this n minus 3. So now, uh, how can this vector look like? It has, it has so this is a full super string amplitude, it needs to have. Uh, it needs to boil down to young mills in the upper band goes to zero limit, and it of course has to have some um, virtual integral. So, and the most natural guess is that uh, this is just a, a matrix multiplication of 
of, um, of, of this object, and there's something which we don't know um, in between. And there's an additional map if you have to, but you can have nothing to do with this, and it's not very good, but it's only a So this is, yeah, this is a map. This is, well, it is a matrix situation, but you take, you take, um, you take the, the sigma component. So in, in matrix notation, it is simply A, in which is a minus three factorial vector, then C is A. And this is, this S is a matrix we don't know yet. I mean, we, we have to put it there because we don't know, I mean, we cannot assume that we just get get uh, this, um, that we just get uh, this matrix, which is a matrix, so it has, it has two, two entries, pi and sigma, um, times and times this vector. So, do you understand this notation? I mean, so here I have a vector. This I can consider as a, as a I have n minus three factorial different object. So this is, um, this is this can, I can uh, multiply with this and, and then sum over all all signals in a matrix situation. And and so this gives a matrix because I have, I have a set of digits. And this is what what is meant here. So I have this is now um, okay. I have, um, this is of course not not. Uh, I have to make sure that the indices are in the right. So of course then here I have the color ordering now this would be pi. This hits this matrix and this hits here. Yeah. Okay, so the, of course it's clear that um, I have here um, a given color ordering for the for the super string so Then of course I should only expect virtue virtue is integrals where I integrate over um, along the boundary. Is ordered according to pi. So this this is the, the line of the n minus three factorial vector, uh, and, you know, being uh, described by the notation pi, and then it always gets, but it always obtains um, virtually equal this, this um, order according to pi, and then this row of course takes takes um, its all from from here. Uh, why why do you get contribution for all the numbers samples of, of different color order with respect to uh, because I know that this is a basis of Yamel's amplitudes, so I must uh, I must need uh, I must take into account all also all the different color orders as well. So is it? I mean, are there questions to this? I mean, this is important. This, this step. But is is it the most natural? So it's represented like the most natural size. I wouldn't guess. But what would you do for no, I, I, I wouldn't have any, had any guess, but people just guess this. Or uh, no, I mean, the history is that, that we have first computed it in, in full fledged super string theory. Okay. And then uh, actually, we got it, we got it, uh, um, we got the object which is uh, used to call pi, 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 we got it like that, some matrix from this. But this matrix is very complicated. And later we found out that this matrix is a product of these two, two simple Riemann blocks. And this, I mean, now actually things perfectly match because uh, um, because um, now I want to explain you what this what this S and and then as a kind of theory. However, actually it's nice to note because for mathematician this object is the most relevant one because this is a period matrix. So what uh, I mean, the C, this matrix here is essentially determined by that we, um, of course, we have to reproduce um, Young Mills in the in the parameters to zero. So I can now write down what S is. So. S is nothing else than um, I mean the matrix S to the minus one is all these integrals of all the parameters. And then, so S is a normalization simply. Uh, so then you see that when I take the alpha prime goes to zero limit, um, I exactly, I mean, this is then, uh, then 
rough, so it was tense. It's like different stuff you know, moving on to the paper. And, and um, you can, I mean, this is now, uh, of course, this is now a non trivial statement because I ask now that all these virtual integrals have. This alpha prime goes to zero limit. Well, at this point, it's a definition for S, but actually, S will have a precise meaning um, later on. So, then um, in order that it is precise, this is the object thing that we can talk about in a moment. Um, this is a very non trivial statement. So, but I want to, we can give an explicit. So, this, this is now, this is clear what it means, this object. So, we have an integration of authority. Um, and then uh, the rule is the time equation which tells me how this um, CC denominator is behaving. So the replacement of that convention hmm? that cannot be a convention. So this is an inequality. This is yeah, but well, when you, what do you what do my natural expression? What I mean since and this so this is really an inequality, it's not that but that's this is equivalent. No, not that piece one. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, I can define, uh, um, yeah, at this point, it, because because this is the first instance where I introduce S, I can define anything to be, right? But actually, now it will turn out that S is a very nice object. But, but S with, so that, is that a quality value one alpha prime? So that yeah. alpha prime equals zero is, is on both sides, right? It's not that any. Well, I mean, this is defined as. Yeah, but I guess this was the question, right? So if there are. Order alpha. So S, S to the minus one doesn't have any order alpha correction because you're just defining it. Yeah, this is because I just define it like this. I define it here as a normalization, and now I determine the normalization. Okay. I mean, why should I? I mean, I, all alpha prime is, is inside here, so why should I multiply with another function here? I don't know. Simply, you know, simply maybe it's obvious. One of the three that we wouldn't have inequality there with the z, which is a more defined. Uh, well, I mean, if, okay, so. I mean, uh, let, let's say I, I, I have here alpha prime also inside, then uh, then I should not call this minimal building block. Then I just um, define new C tilde building blocks, which which combine this S to have here, and this S, then it's a C, and this are then my new building blocks. But it's not clear that the Z are exactly those we discussed. Exactly. And this is a basis. Okay. This is a basis of um, of a virtual disk integral. So it's clear that, that this uh, has to appear here. Of course, okay. you can say the basis will appear in a, in a different linear combination than I, I will be under S. So alpha prime convection here, we, we, we can't allow to change in basis. In a sense. To be called Z P the Yes, uh, yes, alpha prime correction to S would mean that I, I change uh, okay. Basis, yes, exactly. But uh, but it is not um, it is not um, it wouldn't be a good idea because we have seen that the C are really uh, in one to one corresponding to the C are so, so why should I now multiply them with an S and not not doing the same here? And so if you do, let's we can just come up and what I just do a trivial example. So the four point case, of course, and this n minus c factorial vector, I mean, we just deal with, with the identity and with the n as one dimensional object. So we need here, um, <coughs> let's, let's stick to the canonical color ordering. So uh, pi is identity. So what is the super, open super scalar method with this ordering? So one, two, three, four. Well, we have to work this out. Uh, so this integrals here. So we have this canonical ordering with all the ties identity. So we have and then we have a Kubernetes factor. And then we have because I thought, uh, yeah, okay, we have, we have now like this. Uh, <coughs> one, two, three, four, according to this rule. So we have one, 
near one and near one is identical one. So you do you when I see two pi one two three four. So we have one two two three three four four one. Okay. And now um Matrix, which is of course a scalar in that case. So the S matrix is 1, 1. This is a four, four complete octane amplitude. Now we can we can draw <coughs> what this is. So, so we need to take this right choice of axis operator positions. Then this integral simply becomes a um, integral of a home graph. Our C now in that case, and, we see. Uh, and now uh, we can we can turn up and from this we can determine the answer. So we need we really need to take the alpha prime goes to zero in this point here. So what do I get when I take alpha prime to zero? So that means I, I, I put this S in U to zero, I get a point from, from here. So then uh, zero this this X to the minus one. And I know I clearly see what the pole here is. So setting that to zero doesn't um, just sum of one with this one, but here I get a one over s. So this this starts with one over s plus other terms. So from here I know that s one one is sitting with us. So I um, I reduce the s one one and this s. So this is n. I can I now that the open superstring amplitude is sum of x plus one, sum of two plus one, sum of x plus two, and then um, okay I forgot to write down this and that's in English. I mean that's this factor here. So Superstring amplitude for four, four point superstring amplitude. You might have, I mean, this S here, I mean, you know that X and gamma of X is one plus X, so this is what it would be. But this is, a, uh, this is, this is indeed correct, I mean, according to how you do full plus for some associated computations. So um, of course this S here, this S matrix is um, turns out to be, uh, I mean, of course there's some uh, matrix uh, which which you get uh, derived from the pole, and then you just do a tunnel analysis to quantify it from the previous two by two matrices. Then this S uh, is um, is one two. One three plus S two three. So it's just a polynomial of kinematic invariant of this uh, SHAs. Of course, it's clear because when we have this kind of integral, and when we extract the poles, uh, we get some like here, we get some some um, some poles of SHAs. Uh. Now you can ask, um, so 
So what what is meaning of this S or why why this S is uh, um, so why 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 do, I mean it is this question maybe of the line why do we accept the spectrum form no? Um because we have a very we have a very good meaning of this uh, virtual integral this was this basis of um, of virtual integral with what we both to be the J and and Cas virtual having the same programming. But what is this object? Is it some 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 artificial object? No, it's not. It's a completely uh, um, well-known object, which which enters in the gravity amplitude in field theory. And and now uh, maybe um, that we now begin to to realize that there are big connections between superstring amplitude, gravity gravity amplitude, and actually then later to that um, we can see all the String amplitude. So let me just write down. I mean, this is actually we will derive it today because we talk about the closed string amplitude. So, what is the gravity? Well, this is the we will derive, but maybe you see this is now from the, from the super gravity because because now this is gravity endpoint. What is gravity endpoint uh, amplitude? So, this is scattering amplitude of. In, in, in super gravity, so in field theory of n gravitons. So how, how does this amplitude look like? Uh, this amplitude, let's call it um, script m. So you scatter n gravitons in your coordinate gravitational coupling. You can also write in matrix notation. Uh, okay, five minutes. Okay, I have only five minutes left. In other words, I have only five minutes left. At most. Um, okay, I will. I will um, so this is a kind of matrix. Uh, you can again write in matrix notation. And the gravitons are. These are. These are vectors. These are. I mean. Um, Clothes are vectors, I mean, they have one polarization vector, and gravitons have, have, um, are, are connected to them, so they have two polarization. So now you could again ask what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, um, what is the kinematic kinematic building blocks actually for graviton amplitudes? I mean, it's 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 a tensor, it's tensoring two young mills young mills amplitudes because then you get the polarization of two polarizations. And this is when you compute in field theory for supergravity, the supergravity endpoint amplitude. So it's given by these two terms. Huh? I, I only have to tell you what what um, I am with Hilda is. So this is, of course, I am with amplitude. I mean, a second one, I mean, a second set. Now we have um, this is to u up to n minus two, <coughs> and then we have n n minus one. So now you see that um, we again have this flip of n and n minus one, just like 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 that it was written here for the virtual virtual integrals. So you see that the graviton field theory amplitude, which which um, has precisely the same form as found for the superstring amplitude, you only need to replace this object by, by the C, by the C rho, uh, I for even orderly. So this is quite striking, so here, this is the object which now, um, in this context, is called KLT time. And we will derive it uh, um, in the next lecture. So we will derive this formula by just considering closed string amplitude and takes the algebra and goes to zero limit. And then we will see that this object is important to the KLT time. But, it, but this object is the same object which, which we have uh, seen uh, describes the alpha band of the field theory limit of this virtual disk integral. So on this side, I mean, I find it quite striking that, um, that the field theory super gravity amplitude has exactly the same form uh, formally as the open superstring amplitude. And you just replace 
Spannung zu sein müssen, dass das was, äh, was ein Larger Disk Integral auf, auf einen bestimmten, ähm, bestimmten äh, Color oder so und das, das passt so. So ein Replace ist mit der Super String Amplitude. Auf dem Super String Amplitude, also auch wenn wir uns um, zu Specify mit Color oder mit Wand, ne? that means the Replace hier war noch ein Nullstock. I think this is one more, um, one more um, reason that this form I have successfully as it um, as Ansatz is makes very much sense. And uh, now I actually can make things even nicer when you express this Jan Mills amplitude in terms of this was, then you can uh, see that uh, there's essentially not, not much difference between Jan Mills amplitude and the Okay, so now I, I'm, I have to finish, I understand. And uh, okay, then um, we will continue in the afternoon with first discussing the high energy limit of this stuff and then with completely um, closed in amplitude. And, and the rise actually deriving this gravity formula as a trivial limit of alpha. Ja, das ist